So what underlies these changes? Well, uh, so why would we see these, this slower processing as we get older? Well, one of the things that we see to the structure of the brain, a change we see in the structure of the brain as we get older is atrophy or shrinkage of the brain. So we start to see, just like our muscles, we start to lose muscle mass in our mid-30s, and that continues the rest of our life, we see some loss of brain volume. So the size of the brain tends to shrink, and it begins in our mid-30s, and it continues for the rest of our lives. Just a little bit every year, at about, it's about 0.4%, so less than half percent of our brain uh, we lose every year. Uh, now that tends to accelerate as we get a little bit older, so that when we're 65 and older, we're about 1% of our brain is lost every year. Um, now if we have Alzheimer's disease, we see a doubling of that rate. We see about 2% uh, loss of brain. I'm going to give you an example uh, it, right, right now of somebody, actually here it is, the data, when we're looking at the data of brain atrophy, uh, and we plot it across age, so as we go to the right, these are each individual, the brain size of, of a couple hundred individuals um, across, from 20 all the way up to close to 100 years old. And you can see that on average, the young people have larger brain volume than the older people. And the red dots represent people with Alzheimer's disease. So if we follow that line, if we regress that line through this data, you can see that trajectory is one where there's steady decline across the lifespan. Um, and a little more decline in people with Alzheimer's disease. So here's an example. Eric Vidoni put this nice slide together. So this is an 83-year-old man who had Alzheimer's disease. And we, uh, I'm going to fast forward two years, um, and I want you to watch. So, so let me just, we're, we're looking at the brain from three different angles. You might focus on the middle part of the brain right here where we're seeing the ventricles. So this is fluid in the middle of the brain. It's normal. Um, it's a little bigger than we expect, so there's a little bit of atrophy already in this, in this person's brain. But I'm going to fast forward here two years to the next time we did the, an MRI, and you can see... So here's two years later, here's baseline two years later, baseline two years later. You can see everything in terms of the space is getting bigger. We're seeing shrinkage of the brain and more fluid uh, uh, taking the place of, of the area where brain was. Um, so along with this degree of atrophy, it's pretty subtle to the eye, but we can measure it very, very robustly with our, with our uh, computers and our computer algorithms. Um, this man actually declined considerably over those two years. So this amount of atrophy was, was really a major sign of, of, uh, of his dementia progression. Um, so we see atrophy with age. We also see it with disease, with Alzheimer's disease. Um, so another thing we see with age is we call white matter. We, see, we call white matter changes. If you've ever had an MRI scan and you're over the age of 65 and you got your report, you probably saw this term on your report because everybody over the age of 65 has some degree of white matter changes. It's just an age-related phenomena. Um, and we don't, and if you went to your doctor and said, what, what, what is this, white matter lesions, white matter uh, disease, uh, that's the terms that we, we, we call it, um, they would say, oh, don't worry about that. And that, that's true. We don't really know what to do about this. We don't really know what drives this other than age and high blood pressure. We think this is kind of in the spectrum of vascular disease. So this person, these are all different individuals. This person in the bottom right has a lot. Those bright areas are all abnormal, has a lot of white matter change, while the person in the upper left has very, very little white matter change just around the front of the ventricles here. Um, so some people have very little, some people have a lot, but it's pretty much inevitable uh, as we get older. No, so, so the question was, is white matter dead brain? So it, it's, it's not dead brain. Uh, it is... It's damaged myelin, so the wiring that runs through the brain is the white matter, connects all the different areas together, and the myelin starts to break down a little bit with age. Um, and, and, you know, things like stroke cause this. But, other, but age, we actually don't really understand the phenomena that well, and there's probably a number of different things that drive this. Number one being age and the, the factors that, that, that go along with age. So... This, so we, we can see a lot of brain atrophy in people and see no cognitive issues whatsoever. Um, I'm sorry, a lot of white matter change and see no cognitive changes whatsoever. Um, so that's why we, you know, so, so sometimes we see, we, we see cognitive problems with white matter changes, but quite often people are pretty resistant to this 
this change and they don't have cognitive problems related to it. Um, so this is another thing we see with age and, and we think contributes to the types of changes that we see in cognitive processes. Um, so you know, why, am I, why am I talking about those things? Well, one of the reasons why is we're going to talk about exercise and we think exercise fights those things. We think physical exercise works to slow down brain atrophy a little bit. I'll show you a little evidence of that. And we suspect, we haven't proven this yet, or, or uh, no one has, but we suspect those white matter changes might also be, be partially amenable to exercise. Uh, 